Hello, everybody. It is your favorite podcasting bears. That's right. Johnny and Scott are here with Bears of a Certain Age. We love you. I have to say we've loved seeing you guys on our lives. Uh, and I love that that's kind of a new habit of ours. And you guys get to sound off and talk to us. And then every once in a while, we want to do a, you know, a show with a topic that uh, Scott and I want to talk about. And so I think that's fun. And today is going to be a fun show, as you know, May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. So goodness knows I need some mental health awareness in my life. try to go live every other week with you guys and those were kind of loosey-goosey let you guys bring up some topics and chat and we'll kind of riff on it a bit and what's going on in our lives for the week but these uh pre-taped ones uh, we're going to try to talk about different issues that we know are coming up and we know that it's mental health month we know we're both a little mental yeah. so what a better time than to talk about it on tape right <laughs> exactly i always think about i love how british people uh use mental as an adjective for you're you're being mental so which was the best uh english accent you've ever heard just right there oh and just because my mental health means that i'm adhd and go off on tangents have you seen that dead boy detectives and those cute little english boys i have been waiting because i'm gonna i want to binge it because it looks so good you watched it though what do you think one of my um podcast buddies joshua conkle who i've had on um, a couple times before. Excellent writer. He's a producer on the series. So he's been talking about nice. it for a couple months now. So I watch it, and there's these two gorgeous British boys. One of them's a little gay boy, and the other one's just a cute, happy go lucky kind of guy. And they're psychic medium girl, and this kind of really kind of spaced yep. out kind of uh, um, girl with them. And then it has two amazing character actresses. It has Jen Law, who's from Claws. Do you ever see Claws? Oh, you know? I love Claws. Uh, Jen Law yeah. is one of the funniest women on the planet. And she plays this yeah. kind of evil witch in town. And then, oh, God, what's her other name? Her last name's Cuoco, like Kaylee, but I forget her first name. And she plays oh, huh. this, um, this, she owns a meat shop where they live at and everything. She's always had, come around with a yeah. cleaver. It's the greatest series. I love it so much. I want. I thought it looked good, but now in, if you've seen it and you liked it, maybe I'll binge it this weekend. It looks really it's good. Very British. I love the locales. I love. It's a lot of fun. So yeah. Very nice. Do you know what? Speaking of, we'll just start it by what we're binging. Do you know what I started binging that I, I didn't think I would like, so I haven't made a point of watching it. But I have borrowed a friend's Hulu. And I have been watching, oh, uh, what's the, the one where the dead people talk to her? She used to be on Jane the Virgin. Was that dead to now me? she's dead on. Dead to me or what was dead that? Like, dead like me or dead to Not dead not yet. Dead like me. Not That's dead an yet. amazing show. Not dead yet. Okay. There it is. It is. They have done a great, they've done a great job writing that show. It is so good. I can't get enough. I don't want my season to be done because I've just started. So I'd say that's my thing. I've been kind of watching in the evenings when I'm trying to unwind. She has so a now quirky I'm... roommate, the guy that's really quirky, and the yeah. the boss that's this yeah. rich little yeah. that's just hilarious. Exactly. She's from Superstore, mm-hmm. and I absolutely love her. Yeah, and then the yeah her her roommate is on the spectrum, and he's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and and uh oh, is it Carl Malden? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Anyways, I haven't seen him in a long time. He's older, and he is he makes frequent frequent appearances. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a really good show. I was worried, like, how far can you take that concept? They're not going to be able to build the show. 
they do a really good job. I've not so, seen season two. I've taped all the episodes, but I did watch season one, and I I thought it was a fun I show. I really it. enjoyed it. Yeah, I was so I also watch Jeff Lewis anytime I can get a chance because he he's doing Hollywood Flip, and so he's the he's I used to watch him twenty years ago when he was on Bravo. He flipped her house, the uh, the main actress's house, and so. Uh, I love her personality and who she is. I also really love her husband. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Um, and and he, let's just say they have very high sex drives, and so <laughs> you learn a lot about them. But so much fun. She's just uh, just adorable. She has a little baby now. I and, love that. Yeah. So Jeff Lewis. So I will love, watch. Either love Jeff or you have to or you deal with Jeff. And I. I'm kind of the deal with Jeff. Um, Justin, oh, Justin yeah. Martindale, fantastic LGBT comment. He's been on the show a lot lately, yeah. so I've listened to a couple more episodes than I usually do. But uh, and his yeah. little hottie Shane, it's like his little assistant. I like Shane. Well, he's a oh yeah, <laughs> I can see you liking Shane. Actually, there's he has two assistants. One that's uh, more of a project manager. I think you'd like that guy oh, too. Really? So the, I forget what his name is, but there's two I could see. Yeah, I Shane's see on the podcast. You. I don't know who the guy in the TV show is. So I'll yeah. check it out. Yeah. And him and, you know, Shane is also Jeff Lewis's roommate. So I did not know which that. Is, yeah, they live in the same house. I was all, yeah. I mean, I, mean, Jeff has his I get friends, depressed but... when people date people I want to date. And so it's like <laughs> when Jeff started dating Chef Stuart O'Keefe or Stuart, I love Chef right. Stuart. I've loved him forever. And then Jeff started dating yeah. him, and I got all mad for a little bit and jealous. Same thing. For some reason, I got jealous of Bruce Willis because he married Demi Moore, and I'm gay. I don't understand that part. Right. I was a little jealous but about Demi Bruce Willis. Is, so. Demi is iconic. I love her. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so, you know what? This actually does tie into mental health because entertainment can help uh, boost us, and right? laughter. I think laughter so, is a huge part of keeping our spirits yeah. up, right? And I, th I yeah, agree. I think exactly. it ties then, in very well with that because I'm a strong Yeah, there are fan. studies upon studies upon studies that show that laughter uh, is important. There's even studies that show laughter is important for things like if you're going through chemotherapy, uh, things to do with if you're, you know, if you have a terminal illness and you know what I mean? And so it's been great. And I have to say, so I have a, uh, one of my other shows is with a mental health counselor, Holly McGinnis. And Holly, love you if you're watching. So we do, um, oh, Mindful Mondays. And so we do a, a show that we put out there. And we did a show about the importance of laughter in your life and what it can do. And that woman always shows up with, like, scientific stuff so we can see it. So it's true. So if that means your entertainment uh, is part of that, I think it can only help. Now, tell me this, though. Sometimes I use entertainment to hide in my house like a cave, and that's different. That's a little different animal, yes. That's not quite the same. Entertainment right. is, um, there, there's a difference between entertainment hiding and entertainment binging and enjoying, right? So, yeah. Exactly. You have to. You just got to, you got to be able, you have to be self-aware. Exactly. That's what. But the good yeah. thing about in comedy, like you said, talk, with comedy being able to take you out of, that is one thing we always talk about on the show, how we look for people to be social and try to find your community, find your bear community, whether online or in your neighborhood or in the cities close by. But comedy is one thing. If you watch, even just watching a sitcom will help raise those endorphins and get you uh, get you in a better mood. It's something you can do by yourself and enjoy, enjoy yeah. the laughter and I know what you're thinking. You start smiling. When I I, yes, exactly. I'm like, where does your mind go, Johnny? Goodness. I was doing some research, and the endorphins that are released for laughter are similar to the endorphins released for sex. So, I mean, you can watch a sitcom and laugh by yourself, and you can do other things by yourself as well. I am. Um, <laughs> but you know what I, find, I, just, I find fascinating is. Anything that is good is a, is really a yin and yang. Like sex can be good and lift the mood. Sex can be something some people use to hide from emotions and authenticity and having to be vulnerable. Uh, laughter can be great. And watching, binging Netflix or Hulu or whatever, Prime, whatever you're watching, 
uh, that can be great, or you can use a tide. So everything is a balance Very in much life. So. I think we got that's, that's a great lesson. I think everything needs to be in balance. Yeah. They often say that people are usually the most happy and are the most depressed, right? People that go around, they're yeah. putting on a face, right? So they're going around and pretending yeah. to be happy and everything's great, but you never know what someone's living in their shoes, right? And that's those people right. tend to be ones that are more depressed than other people, too. Well, and that brings up a good point, too. So as in, we are both entertainers, that's what we do for, you know, for the, the, the part of our life that we love. Um, we are, and what's fascinating, we are uh, different personalities, but so do you struggle with that part or, or are you balanced the other way and it works out well? Well, we've talked about, I, I'm much of the introvert, so I struggle with that part of being out and about, right? I'm, I'm very much right. in my head planner type of guy. I like to organize events. I like to go to events, but I don't want to really have to talk to anybody once I get there. <laughs> and it's like, I'm, all, I'm very much more to my, I'm, um, I just interviewed the lead singer of Sub Radio. And he said, that, he said something that I really resonated with. He says, I'm very much an introverted lead singer of the group. And it's like, I'm the kind of same way. I'm very much an introverted podcast who talks to everybody all the time. But uh, if I wasn't right. doing that, I'd be very introverted. But what about that? So you're mentioning entertainers, like, I mean, uh, even look at one of the most notorious, of course, is Robin Williams, who right. is the life of the party. He had, but he had a lot of inner struggles going on, and he dealt with depression. When, do you find that you balance pretty well? I mean, we can be introverted, and it doesn't mean we're depressed, right? right? Uh, sometimes it's just the way we're wired. So being that you, you make yourself, you know, you have to be somewhat out extroverted because you interview so many people. Yeah. But like you said, you like to be, you like to plan things. You like to go out. Do you struggle at all with, uh, with depression? Is that part of your artistic drive or yeah. you're just wired introverted and you're doing well? I have definitely struggled with depression in the past um, for, for different, different reasons, different, uh, I'm, I call myself a vagabond by trade. I've lived all over the country and everything, and I don't say, right. and that's kind of one of the signs where you're not really say, I, I always have to pick up and move and get on to the next best thing because that's the way my mind works. And I'll get very depressed if I'm doing the same thing. I feel like I'm not moving forward while I'm there. And so I'll just pack up everything and go and start and move forward someplace else. Um, it, it's, yeah. So, I, yeah, I've, I've struggled with depression before. I've never been a housebound depressive. I've been more of a just kind of a quiet depressive and I'll just kind of keep to myself and be more and more introverted, but I'll still be social butterfly online and things like that. How about yourself? Uh, I am definitely full on artist, uh, full on, I used to say uh, schizophrenic, but I don't want to disrespect anybody who does have that diagnosis, but I am a... Uh, I am that guy that everybody sees on a bazillion stages on doing comedy things, creating things. So they have an assumption. And then when I'm not on, I, I want to hide in my house. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that's the balance. Um, but I, like I was just talking to someone the other day. So I have, I'm lucky with my new day job. I get three days off a week. Uh, we work all of our hours in those four days. And that's awesome so i have time and most of the time that's fine but my brain is very structure oriented so if i'm out of structure i battle what that means so i have not i've only been at the new job for two weeks so i have not yet settled into what the structure is of this new world and so i had three days off two of those days i spent with my dog and that meant that third day for some reason the mental gymnastics to make myself go adult was huge. And it's because I am that guy. I have depression. I've had depression since I was an a adolescent. Um, but I've learned through the years how to deal with it. But it's fascinating to me. I, I'll tell you this. So I tell everybody that uh, having a, a counselor is amazing because it's like having someone, even if it's just a tune-up, it's good for you. It doesn't mean that, you know, you have major health, uh, mental health issues. So I have one just because I'm a little crazy. And so it's helpful. So uh, one of the things she said to me, she goes, Jonathan, I feel like there's a book you need to read. And I need to highly recommend this to people. Uh, the Highly Sensitive Person. And it's, 
she goes, a lot of times I don't think you know where you fit in the world because no one's ever told you that you fit. And so I bought the book. I also have the audio book. I can't tell you what it's like if you're a highly sensitive person to hear a psychologist write a book and you're like, it's the first time you feel you've been seen. Um, and one of the biggest things I've learned right now is you and I do 80,000 things, which I love, you love, that's what we do. And she said, in the book she says, I want to challenge you though, because as a highly sensitive person, if you do a bazillion things and never take moments, because you know I'm always like, well, I need to do something. If I don't do something now, it could be all over tomorrow. Um, and she said it's kind of a form of abuse. You can't let yourself stay with yourself. You need to give yourself permission uh, to have a moment. You know, you and I will always be highly productive people. And you have to get to the point where you're like, oh, just because I took a day off doesn't mean I'm not highly productive. It doesn't mean I haven't created. But if there's less of me, then that's a problem, and I need to learn to care for me. Anyways, I want to highly recommend highly sensitive person if you are a creative and you haven't been able to find your place in the world. I'll tell you, it's I've had meetings since that book where uh, I have held my boundaries and I feel much more rewarded because of it. And so highly sensitive person, check it out if you are someone that has felt felt out of place. Put a link, creative. Uh, I'll put a link down in the, in the I'll put a link yeah. in the, in the yeah. description. When you read the description, I'll put a link in there for that. Yeah. I think that's really good. I am kind of this way. I am very ADHD, and I kind of go to extremes, right? So when I'm, if I have too much time, then I'm bouncing too much because I'm doing projects. Because I'll do twelve thousand things, and it's one of those jack of all trades, master of none, right? And so things don't. And then I also go to the extremes of I'll be busy, busy, busy. But then when I want to turn off, I just turn off completely and I don't want to do anything for a day and a half. And so things get left behind. Yeah. So it's, it, we, you talk about balance and I think balance is very important to kind of find that balance. So exactly. And I think what we have to, you know, we're bears of a certain age, we're, we're bears of a certain community. And I think also to look and see that um, there is a, disproportionate number of LGBTQ plus people who deal with mental health issues, who deal with depression. And I also think not only are we part of that community, but we are men who aren't in our 30s anymore. So as we get older as humans, we also deal with more of those things. So if, if you're a guy watching this, if you're a girl watching this, and you're like, you need to give yourself permission and go, oh my God, my mental health is important. It needs to be a priority. And it's okay if you don't always feel, you know, 100% awesome at all times. You know what I mean? I used to kick myself if I was pessimistic. Well, guess what? Sometimes we have a pessimistic day. Don't worry about that unless that sometimes has become a week and two weeks. That's when you worry. But we need to allow ourselves in our culture to have permission and to give ourselves permission that if we need to reach out and talk to someone, reach out and talk to someone. You know, we need more of us bears of a certain age so that we can go out there and rule the world. Mm -hmm. But we also have to take care of ourselves in order to do that. Well, and we, I mean, we're, we're still trying to get uh, acquainted with the community and we're not really trying for sponsorships right now. Of course, we'll do that route uh, eventually here, but I listen to podcasts all the time and Better Health is a huge sponsor a podcast that uh, there I hear them on all of the ones that I listen to and I I don't know if I can handle a teleconference I don't know if I'll, I mean talking it out I need to see the person for some reason are you able to just talk it out yeah. with somebody can you do a telephone counseling I don't think that would be for me I have I have done like a Zoom counseling when I was in LA and everything was shut down and that was okay. I have an in-person counselor now. So now that I've had both, I can tell you I prefer in-person. But it wasn't it wasn't horrible. But I don't know if it could just be the phone for me. I definitely, that visual aspect. Um, so it was, it was helpful. But honestly, you know, BetterHelp has a lot of really good options for telehealth and tele-mental health services. And this is what I would say. Let's say you're just a person who needs a visual, but you need in-person. It's a really good first step. You know what I mean? 
see what you think about it. You can do it in your home if you're not sure you want to go out and see someone. It's I, And if you need just someone to talk to. And sometimes we're just going through a hard time. We went through a breakup and it sucks. And you just want someone to help you through that. And then you're you're good for a while. You can do that too. You know what I mean? And and like that are really helpful. Yeah, one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to every week um, is Michael Rosenbaum's Inside of You. And Michael played yeah. Lex Luthor in the old Smallville television series with Tom Welling. And right. a, great, a couple of great movies and things. And I just, he talks to some amazing celebrities and he has been, uh, he talks about uh, better health and his mental health journey. And that's what his started. His started with a really bad breakup. He thought it was his fault and he kind of knew it was his fault and how to work through those things and how he kind of felt like he screwed over this one girl and everything and how to deal with it. And that got him on his journey. And now he's been on a journey ever since. And and I really appreciate people that are kind of that self-actualized that can, that can continue on with that. But now, ever since I've been listening to him talk about it for a year or so now, I'm seeing a lot more other podcasts yeah. and we have um, Michael and Matt who do a great podcast and are huge social media influencers. Um, Matthew has body dysmorphia and a lot of images. And so he goes through different things like that. And there's so many different things we're dealing with. I think it's important that we find someone to talk to. You can't talk to a family yeah. member. You can't talk to a friend. If you don't want to go in person, one of those apps, or one of right. the, there's apps and the phone calls might be uh, a good training wheels, like you said. Might be a good way to do it. Exactly. I do like that, I mean, 20 years ago, our culture was not as open to talking so openly about mental health for taking away the stigma. And I do think we've made a lot of leaps and bounds to kind of start reducing that stigma. I do not believe it's gone. Um, but I love that because it starts granting a cultural permission, which I think is also important. So, and, and I did an article years ago, but it was based on older gay men. And, and at that time, I was only in my 30s, so I was still a little, little, little young pup. Um, but I, right, exactly. I talked to some amazing people, uh, men of a certain age, of my age now, and to hear it is disproportionate as well in the queer community to uh, deal with depression. Now, here's I got a, interesting letters from some people who were like, I think that's awful. I feel great and I'm amazing. And I wanted to say to them, I'm so happy for you. Uh, it's not all about you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, it wasn't just, we don't have to think everything we see in media is about us. But I think it's important, and so it is disproportionate. It's why I love that we're going to my favorite place in the world. We're going to Palm Springs. It does tend to skew uh, an upper age range, and it feels like Disneyland for a bear like us. And I think that's needed. And it is fun to see people thrive in that kind of a community. And I think that's important as well. It, that whole thing about finding your tribe, find your community. Um, that can say a lot about, about things as well. Exactly. I reached out to um, the mayor's office today to have the mayor come be on one of our opening panels when we get there. Um, Palm Springs has always had a very high quotient of LGBTQ people on, on council and on mayors yeah. and everything. My very first road trip, I had the mayor welcome us out there. I was on it. And same thing for this one. We're going to have the mayor come out. He's a big uh, LGBTQ advocate himself. But uh, I was reading, so I was doing some statistics while I was on the website and getting, uh, reaching out to different people. And Palm Springs is estimated to be 30 to 50% LGBTQ right now. So that's a huge, it's one of the oh, highest wow. populations in the country of LGBTQ full-time people that live there. And I thought that was very that's interesting. That's amazing. Exactly. That's a very, and I didn't even know that, but it makes sense and also good for us. Exactly, right? <laughs> I'm so I'm glad that literally, I love that. <laughs> right? I think that's amazing. Well, I mean, I guess, uh, what would we leave? What would you like to leave people with with the final thought? And then I'll give a final thought for Mental Health Awareness Month. Well, I think the final thought is is a culmination of what we talked about. I think you need to find a way to get your laughter and get your smile back. If you haven't had your smile in a while. Start taking baby steps and get that smile back first. 
whether it be watching a sitcom, yeah. binging a favorite show. Um, we're at that strange age, it bears of a certain age, where half of us still live our childhood because we never got to experience it for being in the closet, and right. half of us are living our have lived it the entire time, so it's very much a non-issue for it. So I think a lot of us are right. still trapped in the thing where comic books are a thing and all these great different shows. And I love watching teen comedy and stuff because I very much came out late and uh, didn't. So I missed yeah. a lot of the childhood thing. So what brings you joy? Find that smile in yourself. Find it in others. That's going to help you find it in others once you find it yourself first. And I think that that's it. Start by the little thing. Going to a mental help Dot com or going to some place to talk to somebody, finding something that brings you joy, whether it be working your garden, taking your swim every day, uh, doing just watching your favorite sitcom and binging it. Start with those little steps yep. to bring yourself up to where you're actually smiling and then take the next step from there. And your little baby steps are going to make a difference. You don't have to be exactly. happy overnight, but you need to work you know, oh, like God. everything in life, it takes a little bit of work, one step at a time. Yeah. We have to start playing the long game a little better. I think we've taught ourselves to not see past the end of our nose. I have to say one of the good things about my day job is I work with a lot of people who are 60 and older who feel like they don't have they, – they, they are mad at themselves for mistakes they made because I work in the dental community – mistakes they made. And they talk a lot about choices they made they wish they would have made differently, but it has such a weight to it. So what I would wish for everyone is, I mentioned self-permission. I wish for people to give themselves permission for the life they've had. You know, it makes no difference. Why are you beating yourself up? I want people to remove uh, moral judgments on themselves. I always tell people, there is no right or wrong. There is no good and bad. There are just decisions you've made and outcomes because of them. But let's stop putting a moral compass on these decisions. Let's say I every day that I move forward, I have a choice to do something for me that is good. So give yourself permission for that. Grant yourself some, some grace and stop deciding a decision is either hell or heaven, good or bad, uh, you know, you're a terrible person or you did okay. No, because guess what? All life is is decisions. So I would say I hope we can start giving a little more. And uh, if you want, go check out some books if you're not sure on if you want to see a therapist. Like I just said, a highly sensitive person, but that's not for everybody. There's lots of books. Just start. That self-actualization takes more than more than a day, like Scott said. It is a journey, and what, it doesn't matter if you're if you're 42 or 72. The journey's worth it as long as you're still here. So I would say that too. Get cut yourself some slack. You can start from here forward, and nothing you have done prior is makes you a good or a bad person today. Maybe if you're a serial killer, you know that's different. <laughs> that's an but you know uh, just start today. And decide where it is. But I think Mental Health Awareness Month is very important, and I'm so glad that we got to talk about it, and especially in our community where it can play a heavy role. Um, so there you go. Find your community. Do things for you. Make yourself laugh and smile. Uh, I think that's important. Well said, my friend. I love that. You can't do anything about your past, but you can do everything about yeah. your future. You can make a new choice every day. So, Well, well exactly. said. Well, that was fun. Yay. Glad we were able to talk about it. I mean, we like to talk about both uh, the, the heavy and try to put a little bit of humor into it. And mental health can be a lot of a uh, lot of heaviness, but it can also be a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel when you're working through it and you acknowledge it and you share it with others as well. So. I agree. Perfect. And remember, you can send us emails if you want, podcastbears at gmail.com. You are welcome to uh, join us on a live if you want to talk to us live. Or you can send us comments. Uh, we love hearing from everybody. Definitely go like our uh, Facebook page. Subscribe to our YouTube. We love hearing from there you. There you go. We're live every other week, and we will see you here next time. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Bye-bye.